Welcome back to Wind Chemistry. Today you'll learn about density, one of the most important physical properties in the whole entire universe. It allows you to tell apart different substances and elements, and most importantly, it gives you a better understanding of the most important substance in the whole entire universe, water. Most people have a very intuitive sense of what density is. It's a substance's mass divided by its volume, so it's how much mass you have packed in like a certain amount of space. Keep in mind it's not necessarily the thing that weighs the most that's the densest, but rather how much weight do you have packed in your space, your volume. So in this case, everyone kind of understands, well cork is the least dense material followed by rubber, and then the most dense would then be lead. The formula for density is mass divided by volume. The easiest way to understand density is to understand the density of water. And we say that the density of water is one because one cubic centimeter of water, so pretend you have a cube of water, like in that image right there, and then you pour that water onto a scale, it would weigh exactly one gram. So because the formula is mass divided by volume, if you take one gram and then you divide it by one milliliter, which is the same thing as one cubic centimeter, you would just get one for the density of water. So on the left, I have a volume of one, okay, one milliliter or one cubic centimeter. And then I poured that water onto the scale and I got the water's mass and it turned out to be one gram. So if you take into account the formula again, density is mass divided by volume. If I take a mass of one and I divide that by a volume of one, I would just get one for the density of water. It's really easy to tell what's gonna sink and what's gonna float. So in this case, I have uh, copper pennies going into the tank. Copper has a density of about 8.83 grams per cubic centimeter. So because the number 8.83 is greater than one, it's gonna sink. Anything less than one, or if it's around one, it has potential to float. I have a density sphere in this example, and it's been designed to have a density of roughly one. Uh, so you can see here it actually floats in the water because it's hollow and it has sand inside. So the density of this sphere is actually one. It's heavier than the copper pennies that went inside, but it's not as dense, uh, nowhere near as dense as the copper pennies. The pennies had a density of eight. The density here is one. So if it's around one, if it's less than one or equal to one, it will float in water. If you've ever heard the expression, the tip of the iceberg, it actually relates to the density of water and ice because ice has a density of 0.93 it's 93% of that of water, so you can see that 93% of the ice's volume and mass is actually submerged below the surface of the water, whereas 6 to 7% of it is actually sticking out. It's above the surface of the water. That's where the expression comes from, the tip of the iceberg. You already know that ice will float in water, so the beaker on the left contains water, so the ice floats, but the beaker on the right has alcohol, and alcohol is actually less dense than the ice. It has a density of like 0.79. Ice has a density of like 0.93, so it makes sense for the ice to sink in alcohol. In a different example, you have regular Coke, which sinks in water because it contains real sugar, real sucrose, which actually is denser than the artificial sweetener that's used in Diet Coke. The artificial sweetener is not as dense, therefore the can of Diet Coke floats. I'm making what's called a five layer density column. So I start with corn syrup, glycerin, water is there in the red, that's oil, and then at the very top that's alcohol which I colored with green. So I have five different layers. So from top to bottom, the least dense is alcohol, oil, water, glycerin, and the densest is the corn syrup there at the bottom. And you can figure out what the relative densities of these objects are by placing them into the column. I have marble which goes in first, so it's the densest. It will actually penetrate all the layers and go to the bottom. Rubber gets suspended in the glycerin layer, but it can't penetrate the corn syrup because it's not as dense as the marble. And last but not least, we have cork. So the cork will actually just rest in the alcohol layer. It can't penetrate even alcohol because it's not dense. Alright class, that was part one, the introduction to density. I hope that made a lot of sense. 
I will see you in part two where we figure out the density of clay. I hope you're excited to win some more chemistry.